Okay, just ticked over 9.31, so we might make a start here. Uh, welcome all. Thank you for joining us here uh, for the first webinar for 2021. Uh, we at HydroChair, thank you for taking the time with us today. Uh, throughout this year, we'll be continuing with our series of presentations and uh, look to share uh, our knowledge with you all as much as possible. So be sure to be on the lookout for any uh, further presentations you may be interested in in the coming weeks and months. Uh, but for today, we're excited to kick off uh, this year with a technical presentation of the new AP6000, uh, which has been released by AquaRead. Today, we're joined uh, as always by our general manager here at Hydroterra, Michelle Canton, who is our organizer and just making sure things run smoothly. So as always, thanks Michelle for um, organizing and uh, delighted to welcome back uh, a friend and a familiar face uh, that is in the sales director of Aquaread over in the UK, Mr. Ryan Cox. Uh, so thanks Ryan for joining us. And my name is Kyle McLaren, the sales manager here at Hydroterra. Uh, a bit of a breakdown for today. Uh, I'll just give a, a short intro uh, and a bit of housekeeping before we launch into Ryan taking it away uh, into the, uh, the new release of the AP6000. Uh, once Ryan's finished up, uh, we'll just uh, finish with a bit of a Q&A and filter through any questions um, that you guys might have. So uh, as many of you may be familiar with now, uh, the way we run these sessions is that uh, throughout the presentation, uh, please uh, do encourage, feel free to write any questions that you may have uh, just in the, the Q&A box at the top of your Zoom. Uh, I'll collate those and we'll allow some time uh, at the end of the presentation for Ryan and myself to answer as best we can. Uh, our objectives uh, with this continued webinar series uh, here at Hydroterra is to you know share the vast and valuable uh, sources of knowledge and experience, not only from ourselves uh, but also uh, you know, our suppliers when we can. And we see this as you know the most effective way to to knowledge share to a broad number of people and uh, keep the industry uh, up to date with the latest and greatest in in methodologies and technologies. Uh, these may be in the forms of virtual training. Uh, through these types of webinars or in a more personalized sort of hands-on setting uh, to allow for the appropriate adoption of those technologies in the future. We also see it you know, as a good platform for you to share with us you know, the industry needs you guys are looking for and what you require for your projects. Uh, as an example, if it's in the case of any you know, short or long-term water quality monitoring needs, chances are we would be able to put forward a really great solution from Aquaread to accommodate. So uh, please reach out if you're wondering uh, what can be done if you're stuck on a project uh, you've got on the go. Uh, so Ryan could probably talk a bit more on this, but just quickly, um, for those of you who don't know, uh, Aquaread uh, is a British design and manufactured company with well over a decade in the environmental industry now, that's probably uh, that's probably up needs to be updated. It's a few more years on that one. Um, they have a huge global footprint, and with projects, you know, having been completed in over fifty countries and one hundred percent designed and manufactured in-house company. Uh, our relationship with Aquarid has been as exclusive distributors now for uh, almost uh, going on two years, I think, and excited to see what the future holds for us. Um, but uh, without further ado, uh, I'll hand this over to, to Ryan to give us the rundown on the new uh, AP6000 product. So thanks, Ryan, for joining us. No worries. Thank you, Kyle. So welcome, everybody. As Kyle said, I'm uh, Ryan from Aqua Reed, and I'm going to talk to you today about our new products, the AP6000 and the AS6000. Welcome to everybody in Australia and from around the world. Thank you for, for joining us. It's always good to support our friends and our colleagues. Hi, Vitera. We have a good relationship. Um, the guys do great things for us, and we're glad we could, uh, we could support them. So, my, uh, my first slide 
is just a brief introduction. Um, yeah, so in this um, in this presentation, I'm going to talk to you about the AP6000. I'm going to give you a review of the existing offering, and I'm going to talk about why we've launched the AP6000. I'll give you the key points and the advantages of the products. I'll talk about some of the applications um, that the product can go into, some of the specifications as well, the tech spec. Um, I'll talk to you about the Aquason range. So we have an AP6000 and we also have an AS6000, so I'll explain the differences between the two. And then I'll give you an insight into uh, a new product which we have um, just on the horizon, which will be re uh, launching in under a few months' time. Um, so next slide, please, Kyle. Okay, so as Kyle said, um, we, Aqua Reeves, for those that don't know, um, some of you obviously already do know, um, for those that don't, Aqua Reeves was formed in 2008. We're a British um, designer manufacturer of water quality and level instrumentation. Um, we are based in the southeast of England. Um, basically, it's yeah, the, the closest to France you can get without actually going to France. Um, in the town called Broadstead, it's very nice. Um, our staff, we have a full complement of staff. We have 16 staff, um, designers, you know, um, product engineers, assembly technicians, technical directors, scientists. Everything's done in house. So it gives us that sort of you know, agile capability um, to turn our hands to things if we need to. Our products, we offer the full range of, of um, products. So we have the water quality range, and we do a, a wide variety of instruments from single parameter probes right through to the AP7000, which is our uh, flagship product, which houses um, six sensors and can monitor 30 parameters at once. Um, and everything else in between for all kinds of budgets, all kinds of projects, um, telemetry, we can work with most things, and then we have them as tiles all over the world. Um, we make level sensors as well, so um, hydrostatic level sensors, um, groundwater data loggers, vented um, level sensors, conductivity level sensors, and that really complements our range. So tools in the toolbox, you know, not just for water quality, but for water level as well. So we can, you know, instrument the entire project and work with you on that. So we have um, a global presence. So we've amassed a presence now in 50 countries all over the world. Um, and that's over the last few years, we've really focused on strengthening our relationship with, with our distributors. We have excellent relationships now with companies just like Hydroterra, who have the local capability and the knowledge, you know, they have the, the in-country knowledge and you know, the knowledge of their local surroundings of Australia and they're really able to, to work with you and use our equipment as part of any project. We've won a few awards over the years. Um, if you are interested in seeing those, you can go to our website, have a look. And just finally on this slide, um, we are an ISO registered business. I'm proud of it. Um, everything we do is to an ISO standard including the manufacture of our equipment. Next slide, please. So this is just um, an overview of the, the sensors that we can offer. So today we're talking about water quality and just focusing on that. These are the sensors um, that we produce. We produce these sensors um, in-house. We don't buy anybody else's technology. This is our own technology. What that means is, you know, we have a good understanding of how these sensors work, and we're really able to um, support customers very quickly. Um, should they, you know, have technical questions, problems on site, and so on, you know, we can um, get things dealt with quickly. So we have a quite a range of sensors, and all of these sensors are, you know, what the industry expects a water quality manufacturer to have, you know, for, for the vast. Um, for the vast applications that we, uh, we work with. Most of our probes, um, in fact, all of our sort of main probes um, from the products called the AP700 right through to the AP7000 come with standard parameters included. So we don't actually charge um, for 
adding in additional sensors, we offer you a product which comes with the standard parameters included. Um, and then depending on which product you take, depends on how much space it has to add on additional sensors. And that will be things like the ion selective sensors and the optical sensors. Um, and as, a, as part of this, there'll be, there'll be a handout that gets sent out around afterwards. And that will discuss the specification of our ion selective and optical sensors. But as you can see, we have generally the sensor for, for most applications. There are some sensors we don't have. We leave those generally to, to other companies that you know uh, are more invested in the very specialist sensors. Um, but the you know the normal run of the mill sensors that are required for you know surface water and groundwater monitoring we have. Next slide, please. Now. Okay, so before I talk about the new products, it's always good to talk about the um, the reason why um, we introduced this product. Um, you know, I think that's important to, to get the point across on that. So this is what our existing probe, uh, or one of one of our existing probes looks like. It's called the AP5000, um, and it can uh, monitor um, a number of parameters at once, 14 parameters at once, and you can install four additional sensors. And those will be the sensors that I showed you in the previous slide, which is the ISC of the optical um, sensor points. For long-term monitoring, um, our only option for some time has been the, the product called the AP7000, um, which had a, a wife of 52. The problem we had is we didn't have a, a probe with a wiper on that, um, sorry, we didn't have a probe with a wiper further down the range um, at a different sort of, you know, cost-effective um, price point. So, the AP7000 obviously carried its price point. And, you know, I think, you know, budgeting for sort of, you know, recurring projects, um, we didn't really have um, that product and it you know, was generally quite, quite expensive. So what we've decided to do is to, to add a, um, a wiper to the AP5000. So this is our existing program, as I've said. Um, and we've added the wiper. The wiper sits in the middle, and I'll show you that in a second. So the reason we uh, we did that is we wanted to compete, obviously, with um, you know more of our competitors um, more fully, and offer a product which could be used for long term deployments. So the AP five thousand can be used for long term deployments, but generally what we found is after about a month or so, you would potentially get you know. Um, sedimentation build up, algae on the sensors, for example, air bubbles building up on the sensors. And that would cause drift, not in all applications, but you know, in the vast majority of applications, it would cause drift. And for you know, for, for customers to make the jump from the 5,000 to the 7,000, it, it just wasn't really an option. So we really needed something further down the range that would appeal to these applications, because with the coronavirus pandemic, it's becoming obvious that, you know, remote data collection and, you know, doing things where we don't have to go places, you know, ease of access to data, we're all working from home, which we are in the UK, um, you know, is becoming more of a thing. Um, and the environment monitoring, you know, that's always, you know, on, on the forefront of things these days. So we need something that we can deploy on a long-term basis. So for people that are familiar with our equipment, um, and there are a few of you on tonight that are, um, the AP6000 um, does exactly what the AP5000 does. Um, it will be, it is backwards compatible um, with all of our accessories. We've just added a wiper. So, but this was just to give you an idea of, of what we currently, uh, what we currently have um, and what it looks like. And just finally on this slide, you can see that um, the AP5000 um, is sold as part of the package. So you'll see that it's in a Pelly case, it comes with a meter. So you can literally take the probe out of the box when it arrives with you, and you can perform your measurements um, straight away. Next slide, please, Tom. Okay, so that's the AP6000. So it kind of looks like the AP5000. Um, it does nearly an identical job, but as we can see on the uh, on the bottom of the screen here, it has a wiper. So this wiper, um, is automatic, 
Um, so if you have it connected to telemetry, for example, it will write um, at a set um, frequency and you can choose which frequency. For example, if you have it connected to a telemetry device, you can select the frequency in which the, the wiping takes place. If you have it connected to a, um, a meter, um, you can, at a push of a button, wipe the sensor. So if you're using this, for example, um, in a spot measurement um, setup, so you know, you've got the probe deployed in the river, perhaps by the cable, um, and you get an air bubble buildup on your turbidity sensor, for example, you can perform the wipe um, from the meter itself, and that'll clean the sensor and then obviously take a, uh, a fresh measurement. So it's 55 millimeters in diameter. Um, so it's you know relatively skinny um, and should fit in you know most applications. The larger wells this would be suitable for. Um, as I've said, uh, the cleaning system is automatic. It does come included, as I said in the uh, the sensor slide, with all of the standard parameters um, on it. So all you need to really do is is think about what additional parameters you need for your project. And the important thing with this probe as well is you don't need to buy it um, with all of those sensors um, from the factory. You can just buy it with the standard parameters and you can add on, as in buy, those individual sensors from Hydro Terra and add them in at any time. Because the plugs that you can see, I think on the screen you should obviously see AUX4 and AUX3, there are actually um, some screen plugs. So you can remove those uh, and you can add in any of the sensors and calibrate them. Um, at any time, so it's you know it's quite a versatile instrument, especially if your you know your measurement requirements change over time. The um, wiper wipes each of the sensors in turn, so it does rather than just doing a single brush round, it will brush each of the sensors in turn, and the the brush on the side cleans the EC rings um, because on our probes we don't have a sort of a cut out cell constant on our EC sensor, our rings. Um, for that amount is um, on the side of a stick, which you can't quite see, um, but we actually use the sleeve in a plastic um, sort of liner as part of our EC measurement. Long story short, the reason we do that is to save space. So um, we have a, a number of products that are 42 millimeters in diameter, and that technology is just carried over into this product. And just finally on this slide, um, that wiper or wiping mechanism can be removed. So previously with our some of our sensors, um, it's the AP7000 for the moment, um, you haven't been able to remove um, the wiping mechanism. You can change the brushes because as you can see on the bottom, uh, they're just on a you know, um, split pin. But the wiping mechanism could not be changed. That entire mechanism unscrews from the probe. So if there's a problem with it, if it becomes damaged, um, it can be changed very easily um, in the country, um, which should help some customers out. So the reason for this product, just to summarize before we move to the next slide, is we needed um, a, a product which was small enough um, and you know, cost effective enough to fit the, you know, the, the higher volume projects um, with a wiper, with the versatility of being used as a handheld, because this probe can be used as a handheld and it is cost effective enough to be used in, in that format, or one that could be used on telemetry as well, with the added um, bonus of a wiper and all of the advantage that those give. So as I've said, the wiping system cleans all of the sensors in turn and gives you a, you know, a truly stable um, measurement every time uh, without fail. Next slide, please, Claire. Yeah, so these are some of the projects um, or sort of applications that you can you can use these probes for. I mean, you guys, you know, you're all industry experts. And, you know, you don't need to, need to preach to what you can use the probe for. Long-term monitoring is, is really where this probe is aimed at. It can be used as a handheld. It's small enough and light enough to be used as that. Um, groundwater, we've had significant interest um, from our Canadian distributor um, on quite a large project, Groundwater. Um, and they're doing um, sort of tracer testing. Um, they're using the fluorescein uh, sensor and they're using the seed on sensor as well. So they're looking at some, some dissolved organic matter. And they, they like this product because it's small 
um, cost effective, as I said, and it comes obviously with this wi -Fi. Um, Surface water, so you know, rivers, lakes, streams, marine applications as well. So if you're looking at um, coastal uh, monitoring, the probe um, can come with various accessories to um, for that, and also aquaculture as well, kind of similar um, in a way. We actually are producing the plastic version of this probe for the aquaculture market. Um, those applications are generally quite um, aggressive, um, quite saline, um, so a plastic variant is better. So there's a whole host of applications in the data sheet that we'll send round after this. Um, we'll, we'll touch on that in a, in a little more detail. Uh, next slide, please. Come on. So as part of our commitments um, to uh, to groundwater, um, you can use the probe with a flow cell, um, and the flow cell is, is there. So you can use that with your your well pumps. So if you've got pneumatic pumps, um, peristaltic pumps, and so on, you can use the uh, the flow cell um, with the AP six thousand. And the wiping system is unaffected, and that will obviously work inside the flow cell and work away as part of your low flow sampling. Process. Next slide, please. Go. Okay, so that was the the AP six thousand. Um, quite a, a whistle stop tour, really, of, of that product. Uh, this is the Aquason. So that product I showed you and the AP five thousand, um, I showed you first. They're used as part of a package. They can be bought individually and used on telemetry, um, but routinely would be sold as a package with a case a meter, which I'll show you in one slide's time, um, and a flow cell, um, used as a handheld, you know, for all of those um, different applications. The Aquasond was the um, uh, product we released um, about 18 months ago now, um, and it has internal memory and power. So rather than obviously relying on needing to use a meter, power it and have it constantly connected to a cable, um, which obviously all of it you can't put in the water because you know won't do the meter much good. Um, you can use the Aquasond and you can program this with your computer. Um, you can insert some lithium batteries um, into the back end of the, the Pro where the Aquasond label is, and that will pro, uh, power the Pro um, for up to ten months and give you um, uh, one hundred and fifty thousand sets of data. So in the middle probe is, is obviously the AP6000 um, with its wiper. The probe at the top, the largest probe, is the AP7000. That's our flagship probe. And then the probe at the bottom is the, the AP2000, which is our most popular product. So we've introduced um, what we call Aquason to all of those products. So you might see you know, products like this from in situ, an Aquatol 600, for example, maybe something from Eureka. Um, you know, others, uh, QED, for example, they make a, a product um, which has internal logging. Um, all of these products compete with those quite nicely. I um, mean, it's the same kind of context, internal memory and power. So, you know, this, this, these products are really the application these suits are you know, long term deployment with the AP6000, as we've said, and these are fully deployed in the water. Um, and, you know, you can just go once monthly, retrieve them, uh, download your data and calibrate them. Next slide, please, Carl. Okay, so uh, options for communicating. So I'm conscious of time, um, so I'll, I'll run through this quite quickly. Um, the GPS acrometer at the top um, comes with um, all of our packages. Um, it's our, you know, flagship meter. Most people know, you know, they see that and they think, oh, yeah, that's Aqua Reef. Um, it comes with GPS included as standard and it will allow you to calibrate the probe, record data. It's quite a versatile um, meter. Um, you know, despite perhaps being more analog than what our um, competitors have, it's, it's a very robust, you know, unit, um, making it ideal for field use. And it's IP67 rated as well, so it doesn't mind getting wet. And you can download the data, uh, the GPS data, and you can pop that to Google, which you can see behind the meter there. So if you look at the back, that's actually a customer that did some chemistry profiling. So they, walk, they were walking down the river, chemistry profiling, looking at a pollution um, instance, I believe, 
and they plotted the chemistry and you know the GPS is accurate enough um, for that to happen. So that's just one of the features. And at the bottom, the black box. So that connects to the probe via a cable. Um, and we sell those in varying different lengths. Um, our probe connects into that. Power is provided by your data logger, your telemetry or our telemetry or hydro terrorist telemetry, whichever you choose. Customers either use, you know, their own, have their own infrastructure. This converts our probe signal into SDR12 or Modbus. So it's, you know, it's relatively data logger agnostic. Um, and it gives all of the compensations that the meter would give um, to your data that's uploaded to those, um, those telemetry devices. So it will do atmospheric compensation of dissolved oxygen, for example. It will um, do the same for your level. Um, it will do all of the temperature compensation. It will cancel out noise. Um, it will protect the probe from over voltage protection. Uh, and as I said, cancelling out noise is a big thing because these sensors are, you know, can be susceptible to that. So this is a, a consideration that I don't see made often enough in telemetry. Customers just do a straightforward conversion, but they don't worry about keeping, you know, cancelling out noise, for example, from their data logs or doing you know, conversions. A lot of the conversions don't get done, and then you have to do them later, perhaps with a barrel of it, for example. The black box does all of that um, for you. So we, we really thought about that often. Next slide, please. Okay, so um, I'm just on the uh, last one on this slide. So the um, AS6000 um, Aquason range, as you can see on the bottom here, we've got the uh, PC application. So with the Aquason, you, you get a USB cable um, and you can download the, the software from our website. That allows you to completely set up your logging regime. So you can do event-based logging. You can do linear logging. You can set the wiping frequency of the probe. Once that's done, that's obviously saved into the, um, into the probe's memory. You can calibrate the probe as well from that screen. And the calibration for all of that probe is actually saved in the um, in the probe, so it doesn't matter whether you use it with a meter or change meters. For example, if you've got more than one of our probes, it's all saved in the probe. And then you attach the uh, quick deploy key, which you can see on the bottom uh, left of your screens. And then the entire thing just gets deployed like that into the water. And there's a hole in the top of to attach a Kevlar cord um, where it comes with a hanging bucket as well. Next slide, please. Okay. So that was our um, AP6000 and AS6000 products. Um, after this, we will um, send out some further information for you to look at. And obviously, in these sessions, relatively short, it's not always possible to, to cover everything. I hope that was a, you know, a relatively high level overview of the new product. Um, we're excited, you know, it's been very, very well received. I've been with Acri now um, nearly four years, and it's they've released a lot of products um, since I've made you know, variations of products since I've um, been with them. But I think this product is, is the one that I've seen is you know, quite disruptive and got people um, very interested. It's a very capable product, so um, it really adds to, to, to Acri and you know makes people stand up and take notice, which is good. Um, one thing I wanted to add in today, but I'm not quite able to, to add it in um, because we don't have it ready yet, is um, a new telemetry option, um, which we have. Um, so you can see our meter there on the left, and you can see our aqua logger, um, which is kind of redundant now, I guess, with the, the advent of the aqua song, although we still, we still offer the aqua logger. Uh, and on the right hand side, you can see a purple shape, um, which will look like the new telemetry device, although it doesn't actually look like that. Often. It's just a, you know, some uh, fancy makeup by uh, Chris, our marketing director. So we are going to be releasing a new telemetry product, as I've said, um, which will work directly with our probes. So you will literally just need to have a cable um, which we supply. And at the end of the telemetry device will be a connector. So it will remove the need to have the black box. Um, it will set itself up automatically. Um, and you can um, 
have it logging within minutes. Okay, so some of our competitors have already released something similar or are in the process of releasing something similar. The idea of this product is to make remote data collection as easy as possible for our customers. Um, next slide, please, Carl. That's kind of what it looks like in CAD form. Um, so the probe will connect directly to the bottom inside the uh, sleeve there, as you can see on the sort of X-ray view, is space for several batteries and that will power the probe um, for a set period of time, which will obviously be confirmed once the final test space has been released. And there'll be a, uh, an antenna at the top there um, for, you know, fit into a roaming SIM card. Um, that will be um, under 50 mil, so that will go in a two inch monitoring well, and it will be compatible with all of our products. And the aim of this is, is, is to make it as easy to use as possible. So there is no lengthy customer setup. These products ship ready to connect directly to our probes, and they will be sending and logging data um, you know, within minutes. Um, and you can send a text command to set it up or there is a simple piece of application. So it's very, very um, easy um, to do. And we you know, want it to be cost-effective. It is very cost-effective, very, very cost-effective. Telemetry can be expensive. Um, we don't have you know, expensive hosting plans. We don't have expensive SIM cards. It's one price. You get a SIM card and you get your hosting included. That's the route that we're taking. Next slide, please, Carl. Okay, so one of the letdowns of telemetry is the data. Believe it or not, in my view, in my experience, I've been in this industry now for nearly 10 years. And one of the things that always lets telemetry down is the, the back end, as it gets called, um, and the actual you know, visualization of the data. We have decided to offer our own. Um, system. This is our own system that we'll be offering. Um, we put, and rather than just offering telemetry and then sending, you know, text and um, data or email data in a CSV document, we're giving everybody um, a cloud-based uh, visualization of all of their, you know, telemetry um, sites um, at a glance. And you can drill down in the data, download the data. You can put. Um, you can take alarms off the data, you can um, use uh, event triggering and all of those kinds of things. All of that capability is included in this and it's cloud-based. So it can be accessed anywhere in the world. And it's, it's something that we will be hosting. We're obviously using you know, a, a partner um, to do this, but this is you know, sort of an OEM solution uh, that we will be offering. We wanted to offer the whole package um, so, and, and this is what we're going to do. So we, we're really excited about this product. It's just a shame it wasn't going to be released um, as early as we wanted. So, but this will be ready probably one to two months time. Um, it's just in its final testing at the moment. It will be released um, all over the world um, and HydroTerra obviously will start to, to promote it. Um, we expect this coupled with the AP6000 to be very disruptive um, because it can work with our with other equipment as well, not just our own. So, um, but it will obviously, as I've said, ship ready to use just with our equipment. Okay, Kyle, so I'll hand back to you. Um, I guess we'll take questions if anyone wants to ask anything. Excellent. Thanks, Ryan. It's exciting to see uh, the telemetry uh, yeah. coming Shame in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. That's all right. That's good. It's good that you can, uh, you know, show us a bit of a uh, you know, a snapshot, I suppose, a glimpse, I guess, of uh, of what the unit is. So uh, that's exciting. Yeah. We can't wait to get our hands on it. Um, so, yeah, if we have any questions coming through uh, at all, um, feel free to write them to write them in, uh, and we can see uh, and we can start to answer. I'll probably uh, just allow a little bit of time for those to come in. Um, I should just mention as well, I suppose, uh, our rental fleet for uh, Aqua Reed. So uh, if maybe you're perhaps considering uh, the Aqua Reed range, but uh, might not yet be ready to take the, the leap of, a, of an outright purchase for some of this stuff, uh, we do offer 
pretty much uh, the full range uh, of the Aquareed products in our rental fleet. Um, and we can offer those just as a standard handheld um, in a lot of different cabling options with the, G, with the uh, GPS aquameter and uh, telemetry and a few uh, of the uh, you know, lower ranges. So the, the AP2000, the AP5000 and the 7000 as well. So we can uh, offer those as a, as a telemetry option uh, also if there's, that is of interest to you. Um, so something to just consider um, as well uh, for, for your future projects. Um, uh, so if there's no questions coming through at all, I'll give it a little bit more time uh, to come through. Mm -hmm. right, chat there. Thank you. That has one. Good stuff. Uh, let's see here. Currently configuring a system with a black box to operate a water. Okay, so Ryan, um, we're currently configuring uh, a system with a black box to operate a water treatment plant. When will the data logging be available? As in the new telemetry? Or yeah, telemetry? yes, oh. the new telemetry. This is from Rick, Rick Wadley. All right, thanks, Rick. Yeah, so the basically um, the telemetry is on um, final test at the moment. So what that means is obviously we are testing it with our, our probes and our products make sure you know we know it works uh, but obviously we need to you know iron out any uh, increases that there are um with the products they want when it's released it works brilliantly um we anticipate that to take um probably the next two weeks and then we've got a few other things to finish so i'd anticipate really that this pro product would be ready at the earliest at the end of march um but we will probably you know as a safe bet looking at the middle of April. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, but I'll just one thing just to mention then, Rick, is you won't need the black box. So um, the telemetry um, that we release um, is, doesn't need it. So we'll have it, um, we'll have a version of it inside um, the, the box. So, or inside the little tube. So um, that removes, you know, a bulk of the cost, um, you know. So it's worth, that's worth bearing in mind. It is truly direct comms um, from the crowd to the telemetry. Yeah, that's right. Basically, the the uh, the, the black box, Rick, as you're probably familiar, um, just takes the language that Aquareed's doing to put it into um, a standard output that we can configure into, you know, a, a telemetry system of a third party. Um, so that's the current makeup in terms of telemetry for the Aquareed, but, uh, you know, the, an offering coming through, uh, as Ryan mentioned, uh, for just a straight probe into, um, the telemetry offering, um, which will, you know, do away with the, with the black box and having to source a third party system for data logging. Um, another question from, um, Matt, uh, what type of batteries is the telemetry unit going to offer? And what is expected lifespan? Can the frequency of the updates be adjusted? Um, also, is it 3G or 4G modems being used? That's a great question. Thank you, Matt. So the batteries will be uh, lithium based. Um, they obviously give the, um, the required power. I mean, our probes draw 20 milliamps you know, tops. So um, a little bit more than the AP6000 is relatively low. Um, but we do need to use lithium technology. We obviously do use that at the moment within our Aquason range. Um, the logging frequency, you know, you will have full control over the telemetry and you know, over its logging. So yes, of course, you can change the logging frequency, the data upload frequency as well. Um, the modem will be um, 3G, 4G, G4S. 
and it will be an um, MBIO team um, ready as well. So we'll have quite a few screens um, to its bow, as it were, um, but it will just roll over onto which um, capable network you have. Um, we haven't obviously had a discussion yet in terms of um, SIM cards, um, but the general rule of thing obviously with Lenovo is that you use a roaming SIM card. It will obviously hook on to the best network you have. Um, so yeah, so just to wrap up on that one, you you will have full configurability on that. I mean, yeah, you know, the idea of the um, the data bureau as well is you know it can be as easy or as complex as our customers want. So obviously some customers want algorithms to run on their data, conversions to be made. They want the data to be transported, as some water authorities do that we deal with, into external systems databases. It has all of that capability, um, you know, but obviously as well, it's designed for you know ease of use. So these things really, I envisage, you know, to give like an analogy, you know, you've got two or three of these in the field truck because they're that, you know, that accessible and you can literally just take them out, plug the probe in, apply some power, send a short um, text message, that'll um, program the unit and off you go. Um, mm. And you can worry about the configuration later. So that's the kind of route we're going down. But of course we do have that power as well that is expected of, of, uh, of telemetry as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Uh, another question from Paul Matthews uh, states that uh, our surface water monitoring environment is highly ephemeral. Uh, this requires SON deployments in a dry setting in anticipation of flow events and beyond events until access is once again possible. Uh, this can be problematic, especially in terms of pH sensors. Is there any ideas or provision for this scenario with the AquaSond? Yeah, um, I appreciate obviously the the uh, reference junctions um, is a problem. Um, I'll be honest, that would be an issue for us as well. Um, our pH um, sensors are designed to get moistened. Having said that, um, we do have a double junction um, pH sensor, and I need to look into it. And perhaps we can take your details and come back to you um, on that sort of longevity um, and what longevity that would give if it um, wasn't kept moistened, for example. Um, but the, the standard pH sensor that would be shipped with the probe, you know, you would be leaving it for three weeks maximum um, before it perhaps should dry out. So, but I, I can look into the, because we do do, as I've just said, a couple of different pH options. I just need to check um, with a colleague on the double junction to see if that would be suitable um, for me. So we, we can come back to you and answer that. Here if you need. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll make sure I action that for you, Paul, um, and just see what we what we come up with in terms of that double junction, whether that um, might be might be a, you know, an option for you. Um, so I'll correspond with Ryan and make sure I uh, get something through to you. So thanks, Paul, for your question there. Uh, Earl Barry had uh, another question here. He just said he missed what you said about barometric compensation. Is there gauge and absolute pressure options? Um, assuming that might be in both for obviously your uh, your level on range and uh, the the probes themselves. Yeah, so uh, thanks for the question. So that's, that's a good one. So yeah, so the telemetry device has a um, barrow sensor on the board. So obviously, you know, you would know that that would mean that compensations are made um, within the tube itself. The tube obviously, you know, is designed to sit in water. Um, so, it will compensate our probes. So it will do all of the compensations for dissolved oxygen, um, temperature compensations, and so on. Um, the pressure sensor in our probes is absolute. Um, and actually, the meter or the black box, which would be some existing options, um, have a barrow sensor inside and do it in exactly the same way that the telemetry sensor device does. The level sensors, and we don't have a, a, a gauge option. Um, for our probes, for an absolute sensor, but it is compensated, um, perhaps slightly differently to, to what um, some of our competing products would have. So, uh, in situ, for example, do an absolute or a gauge product, um, and you can have a vented cable, um, and you can have, or you can use an absolute product and use a barrow sensor. We, we don't have that, so you know our cable cost is um, is low um, because it's not vented. Um, and we don't have the issues with vent tubes, you know, dry boxes, dirty things, and all that. We like to keep it simple as possible. 
So yep. the probes themselves are absolutely more than comp compensated by the uh, by the telemetry device. In terms yep. of level sensors, um, we do absolute and gauge, and both of them will work with the telemetry device. So it is personal preference. Um, yep. The the absolute sensors will be compensated. Um, that option may be selectable. Um, that's something that's being looked at, I know. Um, and then obviously the gauge sensors will vent themselves um, to atmosphere through their vesicant assembly um, when they're connected into the telemetry. And obviously the, the data that you see online will be uh, compensated back to that pressure. A bit of a long answer, but hopefully that, that could be. Yeah. yeah, and just adding to that too, uh, if you were selecting something that had multiple parameters like you know ap2000 ap5000 etc there's the option uh to have no depth or depth added to it if you're doing a long-term deployment in which case that's where we look at that barometric compensation either through the black box or as ryan mentioned having the inbuilt uh barrow compensation in the new telemetry device so um, yeah that's right um, paul but it is um as i've said yeah it's um it is automatic so um yeah. You know, there's no sort of, you don't have to download data into an Excel sheet and do some compensation afterward. Um, it is, you know, it, it is automatic. So. Yeah, yeah. So thanks for your question there. Well, hopefully that uh, clarifies it for you. Yeah, thanks. Um, that's great. Thanks for the information. I think that's all the questions we have through um, currently. So uh, that's great. Uh, we might um, might leave it there, but uh, thanks, thanks, Ryan, for joining us uh, today, and thank you all for taking the time uh, to view this presentation. It's been uh, very full of information um, and exciting to see uh, the new release uh, of the AP6000 and uh, very excited to see when we can get our uh, little hands on the uh, telemetry unit uh, coming out. So that's very exciting stuff. Um, as always, uh, you'll have my details there on the screen, my email and the contact number. Uh, so, you know, please feel free uh, if you have any more additional questions uh, to shoot me an email and I'll uh, absolutely uh, get back to you uh, with any, any questions you may have uh, after the fact here today. So uh, for now, thanks very much for joining us and uh, thanks again, Ryan, for taking the time out. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and, uh... Thank you, everyone, as well, that um, took the time out of the day to uh, to listen to me. And uh, yeah, thanks to um, Michelle and to, to Kyle as well for, for organising and uh, you know, for us. Really appreciate it. Brilliant. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a great yes. time.